Our next speaker is Ms Julie Mizzen from Oz Industry, the Department of Industry, Innovation, Science, Research and Tertiary Education. Please welcome Julie. Before I officially start, um, I'm a Daly girl and it's so great to be doing something pretty close to home. Um, for the last eight years I've been a, a regional manager in Bunbury, so I was working with Kalgoorlie, Esperance, Albany uh, companies and Bunbury and York was my cut-off line, so <laughs> it's really it's a good feeling to be just not, not far up the road. So apart from that, uh, we'll get on to the real business. All of the information that I'm going to tell you about is in the packs which are at the door when you leave. And I'm going to run you through about 10 different grant programs that Oz Industry deliver, and some of them that aren't Oz Industry but used to be, but I know will be relevant to the audience. Just one little takeaway I want you to remember is, as John said, if it's not suitable for you, it might be suitable for someone you know. So please pass that on. We really encourage you to do that. I'm here today with Daniel Rex from the Perth office. And Daniel, and I, Daniel works principally on our manufacturing grants program, which is the first program I'm going to talk about. You want to just put your hand up, Daniel? So if anybody's got any questions about that program, see Daniel, and we'll both be here after. The Clean Technology or Clean Energy Futures Clean Technology Program, which is up on the slide there now, is a $1.2 billion program. So there's $1 billion for manufacturers to access funding, and I'll say this slowly, for plant and equipment in their manufacturing process. In the 10 years that I've worked in government, this has been the only plant and equipment refund project, so it's been very popular. Um, we have a little competition in our Perth office uh, that, and Daniel will <laughs> enjoy me saying this, that uh, regional companies are out doing the metros and I'm on the regional team. I won't tell you what team Daniel's on. <laughs> but we do have a great take up with this, but it is a grant. It's not a rebate. And it's, it uh, has a couple of um, areas, which I will tell you about, that are important. So if you're in food and foundries and you're doing a project over $50,000, you can apply for a $25,000 grant as these companies here have done. That's Borello Cheese in, in uh, Perth. And you don't need to have a, an amount of energy usage. So we have an energy threshold. So basically you can just apply. But if you're an um, engineering company or you know, those type of manufacturing or fertiliser making companies, um, then you do need to use the equivalent of 300 megawatt hours of power. As I said, this billion dollars is available every four weeks, approximately, the committees meet. It's quite a straightforward grant application, but Daniel uh, and his team are here to help you work through the application. Um, West Kobe Honey in Perth have received that grant so far. Triple Eight Abalone, Lonely Dan in Bremer Bay. Hunza Small Goods at uh, Northam. Indian Ocean Rock Lobsters, um, Albany Seafoods. The abattoirs have all taken it up, um, B and V Walsh, those types of companies. Um, there's no maximum on that grant, so it, and um, and it can be for complete replacement of a manufacturing facility. <coughs> These are the type of projects that reduce people's energy use. So some people are replacing their lighting with with lighting that uses less electricity. Solar panels have probably been about maybe 30 or 40 per cent of the project so far. Uh, replacement of boilers, replacement of the into the variable speed drives. The other 200 million of that 1.2 billion that I was telling you about for the clean energy futures is devoted to people who are developing clean energy solutions. So this is, say, a new type of creating power from algae or absorbing CO2 from algae or a different type of um, energy source. This picture here is Gary Gray, who's now our Minister for Small Business, uh, with Carnegie, who, who have just received $1.2 million under that uh, program. 
We've, so if you've got people working on those clean energy solutions, this is an R&D grant that they should look at. Um, since 1987, approximately, this has been the flagship program to assist Australian industries that our department has delivered. And it's called the R&D Tax Incentive. It changed last year from the R&D Tax in Concession to the R&D Tax Incentive. And there's 1,200 companies in Western Australia that get this assistance back through their tax if they're doing research and development. Now, this is not a grant. This is an application form that you fill out, fits in very easily to your business processes. You basically just put a cost centre aside for the research and development you're doing, and then that, that work you're doing on there becomes a 145% deduction to the business instead of the standard 100% deduction. Those two companies there are local West Australian companies. That's Matrix uh, up on the right, who are our customers under that. And um, the mowing company down there on the left is called... That program, if you're just doing R&D, it, it's, it's, it's something you really should consider. Uh, and it does, as I said, fit in well with the normal business processes. But we do partner that with the tax office through your tax return. Another grant we have, this is research and development again, not manufacturing. That first one was only for manufacturers. This one here is uh, similar to that clean tech innovation, but this can be in any sector. So the innovation they needed to be doing solutions for clean energy solutions. This one can be doing any research and development in those three different sectors like engineering, biotech, or um, IT, so new IT solutions. This company here in Perth, iWebgate, received $1 million for this. The good thing about this grant is that if you're at the early stages and you need a business plan, you can apply for a $50,000 grant and you've only got to put 10000 in. So it'll help the business. This company is at the last stage. So you have business planning or, or working out your IP um, uh, strategy can be 50, up to 50,000. Then you can get 50,000 up to 250 for your last stage of R&D just to check if it's really going to work. And then this company is um, at where Jennifer is. It's like we're now, now, now we're getting this around the world. And I don't know if you've actually met them yet, Jennifer, to talk around the world with. So that's how that grant works and it's called Commercialisation Australia. These grants are all open, there's money there, and, well, until we have an election in September, <laughs> they're, they're all still going along. This program here is for our exporters. Um, we've had this program for many years, and this is not a grant, this is once again a, a rebate. So if you're an exporter and you import anything in, then you, if you apply for our Tradex program, and we've got over 200 companies in Western Australia on this program, you don't pay the GST or the, or the duty on the products that you re-export. If you're going to bring them in and you're not sure if it's going to be re-exported and then you eventually don't export it, that's fine. We just have a way that you can repay what, what we uh, took out when, it was, when the product was coming in, if that makes sense. That program is... is it's straightforward to apply for, like I said. And um, so if you do know anybody in that space that's bringing things in and re-exporting, then that's very beneficial. Now, it seems like we're jumping right out of the right field here because we actually have a program for the textile, clothing and footwear industry. This program has been running for 10 years and it's only got two years left. And every year, those businesses with a turnover of over 100,000 can apply for 50000 up to $50,000 for anything in their business to improve their business practices. It's a business, but like they might want to get in a mentor, they might want to get in a, a, a business coach to work out whether they should go with the next part of their business. This company here in Perth, Empire Rose, they use the funding for improving their throughput in, within their business. And... Um, 
as I said, but the only rule which only came in two years ago was that it turnover has to be over $100,000. This is about businesses getting into supply chains. So as, as we all know, there's a lot of good businesses that you know, do need to get into the supply chain of major projects. And this is run through our department, but not directly by Oz Industry, but we do have an officer, as Jennifer said, we've got the Department of Innovation as well. And there's a number of initiatives that they have, and he works with the ICN to help companies get into supply chains. I'm not, I can't list the project, sorry, what they've actually got available because they, it's all done on, on a needs basis as, as they determine when they're out there talking to companies. But a number of regional companies have, say, got up to $20,000 for getting into supply chains, to assist, you know, funding to a system, and it's just through talking to these people. We've also taken on the skills um, department in, in, under the Department of Innovation. And I put this slide up because for any business, um, skilling out your workforce is critical. And this, these people are co-located in our office and um, have these four, these four programs that they deliver to the business community. And the one that I find most, com most businesses are keen to hear about is the $4,400 available for people over 50 and it's investing in experience. So you can, you know, if you've got people over 50, <laughs> then you can get access to this $4,400 to um, skill them up or further skill them. Like the uh, Mark and Neil over here from the local small business or the state small business networks, who we, we um, give them as much information while we can and they're a great source for us. Um, the federal government also has a small business sector and they work closely with uh, Mike and Neil. We have a phone number, a small business support line, so if you have any questions and you can't and you, know, you just want the answer, or you, you're remote and you just need the answer straight away. This um, small support line is open, as you can see, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, on, so, not, so it's not 24 hours like the banks. Um, but over 70,000 people have accessed this small business support line and the majority of the queries that they've called about have been related to registrations and licences, um, how to start a business and um, they also refer them on to our um, premier website business.gov. Now the business.gov site has absolutely everything you need. I had a business many years ago and I did no research and um, now I look at how much is available. And this business.gov.au has about two million hits a month. So it's a very successful business website. That just gives you a picture of what um, you know, different banners are available for funding. And if you ring us and, 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 we, and you're talking about another avenue like Austrade or like Enterprise Connect who are coming up next, that's fine, we'll just refer you on through and we will, you know, we don't just say, oh, sorry, put the phone down. I want to quickly speak about a program that Oz Industry did deliver for eight years while I was regional manager, but in the last two years has gone back to Canberra, but it's currently open now, and it's the tourism program. And this picture here is of the Margaret of Anuga company who received funding to put in a commercial kitchen and uh, if, I don't know if you guys go down to Albany, but if you stop at the Williams Wool Shed, they received 100000 too for doing up the history of the shearing industry through the shearer's eyes at the back. That's a really, so that's funding through here. So this is a, a little bit like how I started with the plant and equipment program. This one's a little bit the same, but for the tourism sector. So this is really good for helping that business get more, more visitors through its door by employing by improving its business with what the tourists want. You might not ever see us again, and that's a problem with us having such a big area, but we're always contactable, as Jennifer said, through um, this number down here, the 132846. But that's our Perth office number there. We have a, a West Australian newsletter too that we um, already sent to over 2,000 people. 
So if you and we always promote local companies, and we also promote anything new that's coming out across any government sector generally for businesses to apply for. So we are the business delivery arm for the federal government.